Hey guys, what's up? By Sactatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next base identification video. This one is a series that I'm gonna try to keep doing more often because I think it's very helpful. Basically, what I'm gonna do is we're taking a look at four attacks, going through each base, talking about the layout and on bases of this type, not just the base itself, but extrapolating to other types of bases that are similar, how you wanna go about attacking them. These are all great examples. Um, for what's going on at Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 9. Don't have any Town Hall 11 attacks, unfortunately. They are somewhat rare still, but you can check the CWL recap, which will be coming out tomorrow, because I will have a Town Hall 11 uh, triple in the recap video playing in the background. So that should cover uh, those you 11s out there that are thirsting for the three stars on YouTube. Um, but let's get right uh, started here with this base. A um, little bit lower level, not completely maxed out. The other one is more maxed that we're going to take a look at, but this one, not quite. So we know there's a Lava Hound and a Balloon in the CC, and at Town Hall 10, oops, that's way too big. Um, that's better. At, uh, at Town Hall 10, when you know there's a balloon or a hound and a balloon in the CC, specifically a hound, really, that's all that matters. Um, you gotta be creative, especially on an air attack, because you wanna get in there, you wanna get value, but your queen is gonna be pretty much useless. Your kill squad's not big enough to make it worth sending your queen into the base to actually take out the hound, so you don't wanna come in with a kill squad like that and try to bite off a huge chunk of the base because it's just not gonna be worth it. When you're doing an air attack and there's a hound in the CC, you gotta get creative with ways to use your queen without making her engage the hound because what you want is for the hound just to sit there the entire attack. You don't wanna have it pop and have the pups come out and all that stuff too much of a hassle so on this base you can see and also another thing that's going to be kind of a common thread between these two town hall 10 attacks is the inferno towers are only as powerful as the defenses around them they're good at getting damage on balloons but they don't do a lot of damage they only do like 40 dps um something like that they're not a huge damage dealer so if you can get in there quickly it doesn't matter if there's still two infernos up you can still take care of them same with the sweepers they can push but if you have the haste spells you can get through them so you got to know which defenses can hurt you and which can't on this base specifically um this air defense is an outlier for sure and you want to take out the outlier air defense typically if you're doing a mass law loon so the attacker is going to drop his queen right here just to get that air defense going to let her die but that's fine that's what he wants she creates the funnel on one side he funnels on the other side sends the king some valks i think like a jump and a rage gets this compartment taken out huge value in that compartment two wizard towers and expo and archer tower plus the queen, um, the CC comes out, but it can't do anything because it's just a hound and a loon. So it'll just sit there after his troops die. And what he's doing is he's creating a runway for his balloons. Because the way the air defenses are set up, there's a nice loon deployment going in that uh, counterclockwise motion. And check it out, the Inferno Tower is so close to that expo that if he sends balloons like that, they lead in. Sometimes it's hard to get to the Inferno if you're coming from this direction because there's the gap but there's not the gap, the Inferno's touching, therefore it's hardly an issue. It's not even worth trying to take out with this kill squad. It's a non-issue, especially at level two. So um, that's the main thing, just being creative with the queen on these bases, using her to get an air defense and possibly some other value, using a small kill squad with the king and some Valks. That way the hound isn't an issue and you can still get good value. I think he gets the queen as well. Yeah, the defensive queen. That way you don't have to bring the skeleton spells to take her out. Then you send those loons in with the proper deployment that you guys will see in the attack. So that, that being said, let's take a look at this awesome hit by, I believe, Smog. Okay, here we go. Uh, there are the troops. Like I said, um, you can see he has the Valks to uh, supplement the, the king there. He's going to send in a balloon just for the troll Tesla, courtesy of the scout. He knows it's there. I think there might have been a few other attacks. I don't know if this is a fresh Town Hall 10 three-star in terms of being the first Town Hall 10 attack. I actually didn't check that. But the loon gets the Tesla in the corner, drops down his queen. And yeah, the queen, she will not... She will get very little value if you send her in along with the king and everything else. You're better off dropping her separately because he gets a Tesla. I think he gets like an archer tower. And more importantly, he gets the air defense, which is huge value. Um, I think she just gets that air defense, but good enough, really. That's all he needs from her. I got the Tesla too. There's the king. Send the king in before the Valks. Let him tank. Um, he does about the same amount of DPS as the Valks, maybe even less without his ability, but he does, he has so much more tanky, it's worth having him tank 
rather than the Valks being targeted themselves. So has the King tank, has the jump, the rage, gets in there, it's somewhat close here, but he gets the necessary value, uh, gets those four buildings in that square compartment, poisons the loon to take it out. Um, you don't want the loon to drop anything on your uh, on your Valks, that would be not too good. And check it out, he doesn't even need to use that many spells in this area, just comes in heavy with the balloons. That one air defense is very conveniently placed right by the CC for his Lava Hounds to sit there and tank the local Archer Towers and Expos and all that good stuff. So the balloons come through, he has the heal for when they're finished with that area. The haste got them through the first Inferno, and the rage propels them into the second, but he has enough they can take it out without any spells. And that heal might not have even been needed, but it just it helps out um, a few back-end balloons. But really, it also worked out nicely because there was no wizard towers, just a few archer towers, which won't be an issue. Um, one thing, I think Dow did do it, yeah. Bring an archer. Bring an archer for the Lava Hound, because you want to draw the Lava Hound away from your pups. It'll target anything that's ground-based, so if you can drop an archer in the corner at the end of the attack, even if there's no buildings there, it'll draw the Lava Hound away. That way your pups won't target it and possibly make it explode, which could, could ruin an attack, theoretically. So don't, don't do that. Um, nice attack to Smog. Let's go on to the next planning bit. So this next one a little bit closer, but um, that's typically how it is on these maxed out Town Hall 10 bases. This is uh, Team Unique, I believe William is the account, but um, don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on any of these names, actually. Regardless, though, this is an awesome attack and I think um, illustrates some good concepts. So basically, he's doing a queen walk, but backing up for a second just conceptually, an Inferno Tower is, like I said in the first attack, only as difficult as the defenses around it. If you can manage to clear out the defenses around a certain Inferno Tower on any given base, and you can just send balloons straight into it, you can get it taken out as if it's not even a defense. It That that damage it does is negligible if you have a haste to propel your balloons into it, and it just goes down quickly with four or five balloons on it, one drop from each, that gets it done. Really, it's just another defense. So you can take out an Inferno Tower for a very cheap value if you can take out the defenses around it before sending your balloons in. And that's a great um, usage in this attack. And also, another thing we're going to look at um, in this attack is the King. The role of the King as a funnel creator and a tank for wizards going around the outside. Not as not as much of an important part of this attack, but still... He's used for a funnel for the Queen Walk, and um, oftentimes just use the King for that if you can't find another role for him. The Queen can do good on her own. Sometimes he's going to play a smaller role in these attacks. So um, looking at this base, the uh, these two air defenses and the Queen, very accessible. And also notice the lack of DPS for a Queen Walk coming at this direction. Once the Queen's in the base, there's all these storages and like bomb towers and stuff. Um, really not a whole lot of stuff coming at her. So it works out nicely in that sense that she doesn't have to deal with a lot of damage after the initial push. So basically what Team Unique does is he comes in with a Queen Walk, um, actually a little bit lower down, uses the King to funnel um, off in that direction, a few Wizards behind, gets these defenses, Wall Breakers up here, has the Queen kind of come back and in. And there's a Lava Hound in the CC, which there almost always is, but she deals with it. The Queen can deal with Lava Hound, especially with a Rage. It doesn't take her that long. It's a bit of a nuisance, but if there's not many other defenses on her, it's not that big of a deal. It's not like you can't do that. Um, it works out fine for uh, Unique. It actually helps in some sense because it delays her long enough that she doesn't get roasted by the Inferno Tower or anything uh, too quickly. So it can kind of delay her and let the balloons come in and do their job. Uh, making it so she doesn't get too far out in front and go down. So basically, um, by taking out these defenses, just propels the balloons in with a haste, and from there, he has some a nice group of balloons ready to continue through, and he can just come at the base on another runway here, just straight across. you got to have your plan, you know, which direction are you coming from, making sure to not send your balloons into the middle of the base and have there be a shell of defenses left up around them. You want to encompass the entire side of the base so they come through in a wave not like uh, you're digging and there's like all kinds of stuff around you you want to get the entire chunk taken out as you move through and he has the spells to do it 
um, finishes up with um, these defenses with a few spells to help out. Air defenses, not in the best places, but a few anchors here allow for his Lava Hound to latch on, and t sometimes that's enough um, because they are tanking some local Archer Towers. So anyway, not going to talk too much about this one. I'm doing my best, but not, not keeping it too short, but, you know, got to talk through it to some extent. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the attack. Okay, so here goes uh, William. Pretty close on time, but that's often how it is with the Queen Walk attacks. Gotta be very vigilant, or vigilant <laughs> of your uh, the time you have left. So Archer's in the corners, goes ahead and gets that going ahead of time. I'm not a huge fan of that, personally. I mean, it's a very small thing, but the Archer gets killed pretty quickly as soon as it comes in uh, um, from taking out the Builder's Huts, and oftentimes they can do more value at the end of the attack because they'll help with cleanup after they're done, they're done with the Builder's Hut, but... That's one of the most nitpicky things you can say about an attack, so I'm not going to talk any more about that. But anyway, the king, like I said, with a wizard or two behind them, the wizard's not doing a whole lot in this case. It's mainly just the king um, kind of going around the outside. The queen, uh, a little bit close there. She almost goes south, but the uh, the storage is far enough away that she comes back up for the expo. The, the AI of the queen can be weird sometimes in that she, she goes on a long route to go to a building that was... Um, Distance-wise close, but the actual route she has to take is kind of very weird and um, windy and all that stuff. So, has the poisons, has the rage. I believe she gets the defensive queen taken out before the Lava Hound, which makes it a lot... Maybe maybe not. Is the queen down? Yeah, that definitely helped. Um, that he, he got the queen taken out first. That way, she's dealing with just one expo and the... Um, the Lava Hound with um, the Rage still affecting her. So really, it's not going it, to... It, she went through it very quickly. She's ready to continue her walk. Um, not an issue at all. The Expo, I think, even gets off her right here. So she continues upwards. Here come the Balloons in the Haste, and you can see... You know, the Inferno is not even an issue. If You know, he, he makes it so easy just by having the defenses cleared out that he just drops the balloons in with the haste. They take it out um, with very little damage on them. And then here's more the hard part is getting through the Expos, the Archer Towers, the Skellies, that next uh, um, Inferno Tower. But he has the Rage. The balloons will persist. It comes down a little bit close here, but the... Um, Dousing those balloons and spells definitely helps, and just by sheer numbers, kind of brute force, gets his way in here, and doesn't quite get everything taken out, but the queen is still up, which is the important part. She get, she grabs that inferno, and then it's clean up at this point. Um, pops the ability, still had that, could have even saved a rage maybe, and used the ability instead, but um, that's hindsight, so nice attack to William. Fast forward to the end here, we'll take a look at a few Town Hall 9 attacks, I'll try to keep it a little bit shorter. Um, for the explanation, because it's more simple usually. But um, yeah, some awesome Town Hall 9 attacks. We'll talk more about base identification. So Town Hall 9 base now. This is Tom Bombadil, or I don't know. Get a life. Stop watching Lord of the Rings, uh, <laughs> says the Clash of Clans YouTuber. But um, on this base... Um, it's giving you the air defense and it's giving you the queen in a few good value defenses and that's something you have to take for a number of reasons. Um, basically, on this base, there's a nice gap, a lack of defenses here. I mean, there might be Teslas there, I can't remember, but there's at least the apparent lack of defenses and even if there are Teslas back here, it's not that, um, that big of a deal because there's the gap, which makes it nice for almost any type of attack, but a specifically a La Luna attack where the balloon travel time can be an issue, you want your balloons moving through on what's called a runway. You want them moving in a clockwise or counterclockwise wave across the base. And it couldn't be set up much better than this because with just one golem, the king and the queen can take out this right here and maybe not these two defenses. I think you might get them. But regardless, um, can take out that right there. Then there's kind of a, a buffer here. The king can't do anything really. Town hall, not a whole lot going on in that compartment. And that basically makes it so he can come around like this and not have to worry about his balloons being picked off by anything really in this area um, because it's it's all been taken out. So the skinnier, the better typically. Um, by taking out this, um, it's not extremely skinny, the rest of the base here coming through in, the, in that lane, but it's enough of a runway that his balloons aren't going to be flanked, they're not going to get all tripped up on travel time going from one location to another, and um, it's just a really easy investment, especially because the way he comes, the queen goes down first, 
coming this direction. My one pet peeve is he, I think he drops the golem prematurely. The queen can target the golem when it's standing right there. So don't let the golem take all that unnecessary damage. Drop your funnel troops before the golem. So drop like a wizard back here um, in that area. Drop like a wizard back here. I don't think he does, but it could have made the difference letting his golem stay alive a little bit longer. So a good thing, good practice to get into. And then for the Laloon deployment, he's nice and patient. He sends in the loons or sends in the lava hounds, loons behind um, and uses his spells, you know, the, those balloons are the important ones. The ones that are cutting across the middle of the base, those are what need the spells typically because the balloons coming through like this are going to get outside defenses, but they're not going to get the, the meat of the base taken out, which is like this area. Um, so you want to pay close attention to the loons cutting through the middle. You want to be patient, give them time to develop with uh, your spells. You won't need the spell timing to be money, especially going into an air sweeper that's, you know, pushing out like that. So um, he does a nice job waiting, nice and patient. Let's take a look at the attack. Okay, um, so yeah, actually let's get the funneling down ahead of time, at least the baby dragon. Could have dropped the wizards and stuff ahead of time. They would have been out of range of some of those defenses. Because you can see the queen's doing work on the golem. No poison on her. There's the poison. Um, would have saved the golem's health because right about now it's about to bust just as his troops are moving in. So uh, not that big of a deal, but something that could have helped. The baby dra dragon actually goes all the way up and gets that archer tower, which is incredible value from that baby dragon. So the heroes go in. There is, it looks like a Tesla or two back there. But still, they're, they're close enough to the to the main lane, you could call it. the uh, That... Uh, that runway I drew out that they're not going to, you know, force the balloons to take too much of a detour. They're still in the main progression, especially being close to the air sweeper. So uh, the queen kind of dips out for a while on the town hall. Here comes the Laloon. And um, personally, my, myself, I have a bad habit of just being too, um, get all the balloons down really quickly. Um, I don't have the patience, but um, Tom has great patience here. You can see just letting the balloons develop, just dropping the hastes, dropping the rages, letting them go through. He's going to have a heal for them also because he knows the middle balloons are what matter most. He needs to keep those guys up. The rest of the balloons are really only the uh, the sideshow um, just to, uh, to take out some outside defenses. But the main group is the group going through. The queen actually steps up and gets a few Teslas, it looks like, which definitely doesn't hurt. And uh, everything converges on the air defense. One thing, trend, I've been noticing lately is that the air defenses um, don't always have to, the lava hounds don't always have to be up for the last air defense. Oftentimes the balloons can just converge onto it if there's enough of them left up, which there are on this attack. So nice attack to Tom. We'll take a look at, uh, at one more Town Hall 9 attack. So for this last attack, um, it's it's a good example of a hog attack, specifically um, a stoned hobo. Basically, it's it's a great attack to do a golem-based bowler uh, big kill squad going in because of all the value in the middle. You got both X, both bo both expos, both heroes. Some Teslas are actually back here as well. There's just so much to be gotten in the core of this base. Sometimes you see, you see the expo compartments with the two tile buffer around them and everything's so spread out, which can really mess up your golem pathing and whatnot. But this is all straightforward. It's all right there. It helps. There's not much on this flank because he sends his troops in at this angle. Um, so when you see bases like this, you want to get to the middle of them. And it's a great base to use hogs on and uh, the golem bowler kill squad. But you got to make sure your, goal, your kill squad and your hogs work in tandem. And especially if you're using all your spells on your uh, kill squad, which sometimes you will have to do, especially if you're bringing two jump spells, you got to make sure they move in unison because the golems will have to tank for the hogs to a certain extent. So you can see when deciding where to deploy the hogs, because you have the troops moving through, they're getting into the middle here. Um, the main thing is up top because you have these defenses they're going to be raining in. Um, this cannon, I think, will go down because his troops are moving in. Um, the queen or some bowlers will take it out. Um, this area, not as much of an issue. It's not as immediate as a threat. The main thing is to get this taken out. That way his troops can converge in that area together. You don't want to leave a big section up, especially surrounding your troops. Not a good situation. Now, the CC is a bit of a weird issue, but it's a hound in the CC. And if you get that, and if you know it's there, if the CC is offset, 
um, as a hound, which is kind of weird. Most of the time, it's not a hound in the CC when it's that far to the side. But regardless, when it's that when that's the case, you um, you can do attacks like this and just kind of ignore it because the hogs won't uh, mind it. I think eventually the queen does take it out, but she gets all this value first, so it doesn't even matter at that point. Um, it's a great way to take advantage of the hound in the CC. But the main thing is all the value in here. Um, that makes it worthwhile to send the uh, the stoned hobo kill squad in it, especially, you can do it in a lot of different bases, but especially on this base. So let's take a look at the last attack here. Okie dokie, uh, this is Dax, Dirty Dancing. Um, nice attack, 6 star war I believe, so good stuff, good job to her. Um, but basically it's um, a great example of bowler funneling as well nice hog trade there on the mortar and a nice loon trade on the other mortar so that five troop space is often a good investment to take out the mortar because it has funnel value as well as just getting a defense out of the way even if it's a pretty weak defense so look at that second layer of funneling we i've talked about it a lot second layer of funneling getting not just the first out outer layer of trash but the second layer getting it all taken out so the bowlers have nowhere to go but into the base here. Uh, the wizards do a great job. They step up, even get that cannon, which is important, and the air defense on the other side. Those could potentially lead the bowlers astray, but the obvious uh, next target for them is, of course, the uh, the wizard towers and all that good stuff in there. Two jump spells uh, drops those very um, in good positions and leads the bowlers and everything into those expos, which are great, um, valuable defenses. Poison spells, could have used them on the heroes, um, but I guess saving them for pot potential lava pups is not a bad idea either. A little bit late on the hogs, you could argue, but luckily there's still some golems and some golemites and whatnot in the base tanking, so the hogs are not targeted, which is especially good because she doesn't have any heals for them. But like I said, if the golems and the, and the hogs can kind of work in tandem, you can avoid having to use the heals on your hogs. Right there's the split, but the good poison saves life of some of those hogs and uh, still has some more hogs left to deploy. Nice um, and convenient how the last few defenses are all right there, accessible for the hogs and the queen. Um, good part of the base to end on, especially with no spring traps or anything like that because everything's so tight in that area. So drops those hogs for cleanup actually. King is still up on the outside of the base. Awesome attack, good job. Hope you guys liked the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. CWL recap coming out tomorrow. Be sure to watch it. Awesome attacks, even at Town Hall 11 v 11 triple, as I talked about at the beginning of the video. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bisectatron out.